Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today I'm going to show you how to replace just the boot on your half shaft on our 2016 Polaris Ranger 900 XP. Just replacing the boot is a whole lot cheaper than having to replace the entire shaft. So let's head over to the tool table and discuss the tools and the parts you're going to need to pull this off. Welcome to the tool table. This is going to be a skill level two, but it's not going to be that difficult. Let's go over some of the tools that you're going to need to pull this off. On the standard side, you're just going to need basic sockets ranging from a 15 up to a 27. You're going to need a decent ratchet, a couple of different torque wrenches, and a breaker bar. Also want to pick up a dead blow hammer, so those are a couple of things we have to knock loose. Pliers, just a set of needle nose. Now the one specialty tool that you'll need to pick up is a CV boot tool. You will not be able to pull it off if you don't have one of these. Now, as far as our parts, if you would, reference our exploded parts diagram. That's going to give you a very clear picture of what you need to order to get this particular project done. So, once you have your tools and your parts together, I can go over there and show you how to do it. So let's go. Before we lift it up, let's go ahead and break the uh, lug nuts loose. All right, guys, here's what we're up against. What we have is a cut on our outer boot. Now, if you catch it soon enough, you can just replace the boot without having to replace the whole drive axle, providing there's no intrusion of water or dirt inside the, uh, what's left of the boot. So our plan of attack, what we want to do is go ahead and take off this cotter pin, this castle nut, this upper shock mount on the upper A-arm, then the lower ball joint, then we should be able to lift the assembly up enough to get the drive axle out. All right, we'll start by getting out this cotter pin, and then we're gonna go after this castle nut. I'm gonna use an impact. If you don't have an impact, just have somebody jump inside the vehicle, hold the brakes, and that should be enough to get it pulled off. Once you've got the castle nut off, there are actually two beveled washers that come off, and you just wanna make sure when you put it back together that you have the bevel going in. All right, next, let's go for that lower ball joint. Leave the bolt in place for right now, and let's pull that lower mount for the shot. Now, let's drop out lower ball joint. See if that gives us enough distance to pull out our CV axle. What I'm going to do is just use a strap to hold it up and out of the way. All right, guys, since we're only doing our outer boot, I'm actually going to leave it still inside the front gear case. So what we want to do next is go ahead and remove both of our bands and then slide the boot and that outer joint off. Now you can cut these bands or you can just squeeze them and get them to release. And then that point that I'm squeezing together was right here. Because believe it or not, that one little distance compressed back together will allow it to pop off. So we could actually reuse these if we needed to. But the kit actually comes with new clamps as well as the grease that you need to put inside the joint. Now she just slides right off. And I can tell there was no water or dirt intrusion into this joint, so it's going to be good to go to go back together. But I do want to scoop out this existing grease because I want to put new stuff in there. I mean, why not? When you're cleaning this up, you want to make sure you get all the grease out of this outer edge because we want that to be clean and dry so the new boot really gets seated in there. I don't want to leave grease in there and allow it to slip off when you were at a really tight turn angle because that, that's what would happen and that's what we don't want. All right, now let's go ahead and get our clamp on. Then our boot, go ahead and push it up out of the way. Now we want to take our grease, fill it inside of the boot, but don't let it get on that edge because that's the part that needs to be in contact with this side of the joint. 
make sure this inner spline is flat with the surface so it'll go directly on to the end of the, uh, the shaft itself. Now, make sure you're lined up on the splines and you can tell that because I can turn the half shaft and then we want to just tap it down till it bottoms out. Bring your boot down until it reaches into that groove and now we can go ahead and work on the clamps. And we're going to use our clamp tool to grab it from right here to right here. That's the distance. And then we need to pull those two points together to you hear it click. Now you have to be careful with the smaller one because it'll try to crimp up on you and we don't want that to happen. There's the click and then let it go. And there it is. Do the same thing for the large one. Alright, this time we're grabbing it from here to here. And as I'm guiding it up, I'm going to keep my thumb pressed to where it'll catch from here to back here once it's compressed on. There it is. And release. Now, let's just get it put back together. Let's start by getting some grease back onto our spline because as you notice that came apart rather simply and if you don't grease this and it gets rusted up that can be a potential nightmare down the road. Okay, the splines are greased up. Let's go ahead and release it from our little strap up here. Get it out of the way. Now, let's feed it back through. We'll go ahead and put in that upper shock mount and that'll hold our A-arm in position so we can get that lower bowl joint in. Get it lined back up. We're going to snug both of these back down and then torque each one to 42 foot-pounds. All right, with those two torqued down, let's go ahead and get on our two beveled edge washers for our castle nut. And then we're going to torque this to 80 foot pounds. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to have somebody hop up in the cab and hold the brakes. Next, let's get our cotter pin back in place. And the way Polaris does it from the factory, they actually just bend both edges back up and over. At this point guys, all we need to do is remount the tire, drop the unit down, and then torque the lug nuts to 120 foot-pounds. Well alright guys, that wraps this one up. You just saved yourself a bunch of money doing it yourself instead of taking it to the dealership. Well listen, if you need any other parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. Have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Till next time, we just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at partzilla.com. And if you like what you see, hit that little subscribe button over there and that'll tell you what's going on next in our world. Well, listen, thanks again and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.